Alright, let's check the downloads folder. Um, ooh, uh, there is an application called hexasim2.0.exe. Let's fire it up and see what happens. Here we go. Welcome to Hexasim Pro version 2.0. Greetings, fellow enthusiast of robotic marvels. I, your faithful AI companion, ChatGPT, extend a warm welcome to Hexasim Pro version 2.0, the pinnacle of Hexapod simulation technology. Since this is written in Go, it is cross-platform. It will run on PC, Macintosh, or even a Raspberry Pi. Just hook up a buffer line driver to your Raspberry Pi, and you have a controller for your Hexapod if you feel like taking it for a spin in meat space. Happy simulating. Your faithful companion, ChatGPT. Wow! This looks promising. Um, okay, uh, type help. So here we have a list of commands, effectors. Okay, that's the end effector positions. We can do rotation. Select between different gates. We can change the parameters of the coxa, femur, tibia, both segment lengths and angles. We can set a stride, we can start stop it, change speed, define the uh, lift of during the swing phase probably. Yeah. Okay, let's see what it can do. It seems like it's currently in tripod gate mode. So we're gonna okay, try set the speed to 50. And we set the stride for three, and we can start it. Nice. Try changing the speed so we can see it in slow motion. Uh, let's try a gate change. Let's try wave gate. Ah, so it's cheating a bit. Okay, and speed it up. This looks really, really nice. Let's try Ripple Gate. Okay, so now it's moving two legs at a time. Let's try a different uh, stride. Let's let's do the reset. Zero and start. So now it's moving sideways. Let's try uh, forwards. Uh, stop it. Right. Zero three one start. Ah, oh, looks like <laughs> looks like there's a bug in there somewhere. Try again. Stop. Reset. Okay. Um, let's try it. Three, zero, and let's try the wave gate. Stretch. Something funny going on. Slide zero forty. Okay. Maybe I just did a typo. Uh, wave. Yeah, now it's working. Uh, speed fifty. That's pretty slow. Get uh, tripod. Get. Yeah, this looks really, really, really good. Nice. Okay, you probably guessed right. Chat GPT did not write that piece of software. I did. I like Chat GPT. I like large language models. They're useful. So I try to be fair to it. Uh, obviously, I didn't ask it stuff like the prompts in the beginning of this video. I uh, ask it very specific questions like uh, I have this robot leg, 
it has three degrees of freedom. Uh, can you provide a code example that demonstrates inverse kinematics or forward kinematics? And it failed miserably each time. Uh, it produced code that was obviously scrubbed from various GitHub projects. Uh, not useful at all. Uh, sorry about that, you, all you aspiring prompt engineers out there. I guess you will have to still have to learn math and basic engineering for a few more years before you can do useful stuff. Uh, the one thing that was useful though was uh, listening to people who knew what, know what they're talking about. Uh, I started following a YouTube series uh, from a YouTuber that goes by the name of Angela Soldemann. Sorry, Angela Soldemann. Uh, I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, she has a couple of uh, YouTube series on robotics and she explains stuff uh, in great detail and she goes into great depth and the videos are easy to follow if even if you have no kind of prior knowledge on robotics um, so I watched her videos and then I wrote the simulator from scratch uh, if you're uh, kind of embarking on a hexapod or a maybe a small robot arm project uh, I can highly recommend her videos I'll drop a link in the description why make a simulator at all after you build the robot um, building a robot is easy making it move is hard and uh, doing a simulator allows for a much richer environment for testing and it allows me to uh, view the hexapod from multiple angles at the same time. Uh, I can add kind of graphical artifacts to help me debug stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a much nicer development platform than coding on the bare metal. Um, an added bonus that uh, I really didn't think about until the project was nearly finished. Um, since I've written this in Golang, I, I was thinking initially I could have some form of code export. So I have this controller board, right? Uh, I also use it on my balance bot. Uh, this has an ESP32. So I was thinking, uh, um, okay, once I get the simulator up and running, I can maybe export ESP32 code. Uh, hey, easy, right? Uh, and then it struck me, um, I've written this thing in Golang uh, and you can compile Go programs on a Mac, uh, PC or a Raspberry Pi. And if you have a Raspberry Pi, all you need is a um, buffer circuit, line driver circuit, and you can talk to the Dynamexel directly from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and that means I can use the same code for uh, designing a hexapod, testing it uh, virtually. Uh, and when I'm satisfied, I can basically run the same code on the embedded platform if I switch out this board with a Raspberry Pi and a small daughter board. So what's the state of the code? Um, it's nearly feature complete, I would say. Um, one thing missing is uh, live stride transitions, so I can switch from one direction to the next. Um, I would also like to add a web server um, so I can control it from my phone. That would be really useful. Um, I'll drop the code on GitHub once I'm satisfied with it. Um, I'll try to make it as educational as possible, so I'll comment everything. Uh, there are lots of YouTube videos out there trying to explain robotics and kinematics and stuff. Uh, and very few of them are easy to follow if you're trying to learn. Um, a lot of them focus on Denovit Hartmann parameters, which are supposed to make stuff easier for you. Um, 
My take on that is that the easiest approach is to do everything from first principles. Um, forward kinematics is just a matter of uh, using the right hand rule for defining axis. Each of these servos in a robotic limb has its own frame of reference. So you have this kind of base frame of reference with the XYZ uh, co coordinate system. And each of these joints have their own reference frame. So all you need to do, uh, you need to know something uh, about rotation matrices. You can just look that up on, uh, on the internet. Um, you need to know something about projections and displacement vectors. And this stuff is really, really easy. Um, so to do forward kinematics, you basically make a transformation matrix for each of these joints and you multiply them together. And then you can pick out the coordinate for the end effector in the base reference frame coordinate system after you've done the multiplication. And uh, the forward kinematics part is actually a lot harder than the inverse kinematics part. Uh, as it turns out, if you have a robot leg with only... Uh, I can't find it. Boom. With only three degrees of freedom, all you need to do to do inverse kinematics is this. Easy. You need to know the cosine rule and basic trigonometry and you're done. I'll also explain this using some uh, uh, graphics and uh, uh, comments in code and the readme file. So uh, I think it should be easy to follow. Uh, yeah, great learning experience for me. Big thanks to Angela Soderman for providing uh, great input uh, from her videos. Next thing is to hook up uh, Dynamics library in the code base. And then I'll try to run it from my computer and use this as kind of a test limb in MeetSpace. Uh, if I can get that to work, I'll uh, bot on a Raspberry Pi and some uh, uh, hacked electronics and try it out on the real thing. Yeah, so I'm guessing this is uh, going to be a multi-part series. So yeah, stay tuned if you're interested in hexapods. And uh, until next time, bye.